Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome uh, to this talk, uh, the search track of the Berlin Buzzwords 2021 edition. Uh, I'm going to be talking about highly available and disaster ready uh, Apache Solo today. So uh, during the course of this talk, I'm going to be introducing uh, a few concepts, uh, talk about DR, and then talk about HA and the options that Solo provides out of the box uh, to, uh, to if you want, if you were interested in HA and DR, what, what would your options look like? So over the years, uh, Apache Solar has evolved into something that's more than and beyond full text search. Uh, it's come down, come over to uh, to do handle use cases uh, that involve machine learning, analytics, and a lot of other things, almost like a Swiss Army knife. Um, it's not only grown in the number of features that it offers, but uh, that it can help its users accomplish, uh, but also the scale at which these features can be successfully used. Because of that reason, uh, Solar's been uh, used in uh, in a wide variety of industries in in infrastructure that uh, I can only define as critical. Uh, the ways in which these industries, like retail banking, travel, research, and a bunch of others, use Solar make it essential for for it to work reliably, both in terms of correctness as well as availability. So we're going to dive directly into disaster recovery. Uh, Disaster recovery was developed in the mid to late 1970s when there was a realization uh, on the dependence of uh, computer systems and that downtime meant uh, a loss of revenue. Uh, back in the day, uh, mainframes would back up on tapes and wait until those tapes would, would, would complete restoration of data in case something were to happen. Over the years though, uh, disaster recovery has evolved uh, a lot. And currently disaster recovery involves a set of policies and tools and procedure to, uh, to kind of enable the recovery of, um, of an existing system for its continued uh, availability or continued uh, operation. And that could happen due to either a natural or a human disaster. And disaster recovery generally uses an alternate site uh, to restore that operation uh, you know, uh, for the entire, to normalcy for the entire site. As the intention is to have the primary location recover, it can it is generally done in one of the two ways: either uh, using an offline process, something like a backup restore, or um, more actively or transferring data at real time so that if something were to happen to your original system, you could recover from that. The solar has provided uh, DR readiness, and I'm going to re refer to uh, disaster recovery as DR for the rest of the slide for the most uh, more, more often than not. So solar has provided DR readiness options for a while. And while they have evolved over multiple releases, they still continue to be the recommended options, the same options. And while uh, so backup and restore is certainly uh, the most important DR option available, but CDCR or cross data center replication, as it's known, um, actively copies data, allowing it to be also to also work as an HA solution. Um, but I'd like to highlight that DR shouldn't be confused with HA, and we're going to get to that in a little bit. DR, uh, an important aspect of DR that is that it is configured with a designated time to recovery um, and a recovery point. And by, by recovery point, I really mean that uh, checkpoints are generally, uh, are generally, uh, sorry, yeah, are generally uh, maintained. And when a restoration has to happen, uh, data is expected to go back to that restoration point. Uh, essentially translating to not all data that you might have uh, you know gotten into the system before the disaster happened is going to be recovered at least that's uh, that's by design diving a little deep into backup and restore options for solar to give you a little bit of history of the backup restore feature that solar offers it was first introduced in um, in version 6.1 and when it was introduced, it was vanilla, but um, it basically came with some restrictions. Uh, most importantly, it only allowed for full backups and was not really cloud friendly in, in the sense that all it would allow users to do is to back up either on NFS, so which is local backups or HDFS. Um, and uh, there was no way to only back up data or the configs, so it would always back up everything uh, every time. Uh, 
And more often than not, there were a lot of failed backups. And I'm going to go back to why that happened. But there was a realization that uh, something needed to change if this feature were, was to be continued to use to be used by by its users. So it needed a new perspective. And that new perspective came in the in the form of incremental backups. The realization that uh, Solo tries to back up every bit of data every time you want to back up, and people generally want to back up hourly, maybe twice an hour, maybe less frequently. But uh, backing up all of the data every time really meant uh, you know uh, storing more data, also transferring more data across the network, uh, maybe even to a different data center. So with incremental backups, uh, Solo offered something. Uh, that allowed for reducing redundancy of data storage and transfer, translating to faster and less expensive uh, backups and restores. Um, but it did not stop there. This entire feature offered two more valuable uh, valuable sub-features, you could say, or, or, or things. Um, first one being safety against corruption. While the previous backup mechanism did not check uh, for a backup index before it backed up, the, the incremental backups ensured that uh, the index files that were uh, that were backed up were checksummed, uh, and to to ensure that at the time of backup, the index file that you were backing up was good to use if you were to need it. Um, and another more important aspect of this was this entire uh, architecture allowed for backups to be more cl cloud friendly. So you were no longer restricted to only using uh, NFS or HDFS uh, file systems. So, so backup and restore evolved into something that, um, that started using incremental backups, allowing users to kind of optimize on the resources it requires and also the odds of it succeeding. Um, but it also uh, added extendable interfaces. So what that meant was uh, you could now have cloud services or cloud service providers uh, as your backup options. While that wasn't something that was released when when this change happened, uh, but uh, over actually the upcoming release, most I think, uh, is going to have support for GCP, and there's an open PR for supporting AWS or S3 uh, as a as a backup option. Uh, for for solar cloud, uh, the PR is still open, so I'm not sure when it's going to be merged and released. But uh, it's out there and it's looking really good. Um, one one interesting thing that solar allows you to do is to define multiple uh, repository implementations, and uh, the extendable interfaces that I just spoke about are actually repository implementations. Uh, allowing you to have a definition of say HDFS, GCP, AWS, maybe another uh, you know proprietary backup uh, file store that you that you might have at your workplace uh, uh, and you don't really have to use all of these all the time and you can specify exactly what you want at runtime uh, making it really easy and convenient for people to uh, to, to switch and use uh, things uh, as they wanted and uh, one more uh, interesting aspect of this backup and restore update was um, unlike the pre unlike the older backup restore which required users to restore uh, an existing index into an into a new collection only uh, the new backup and restore uh, yes it did it, it still continues to work with alias which is also a recommended mechanism if you don't want to change your client code but backup, the new version of backup and restore allows users to restore into an existing collection, piggybacking on, on a feature that was released uh, only recently that allows solar indexes or collections to be marked as read only um, allow, at the same time or at, in, in the background, allowing you to restore into the same collection. So how do you how do we use uh, backup uh, you know backup and restore and for the sake of time just discussing uh, backup here uh, so you basically have to define uh, your uh, implementation that you you might use uh, in your solar setup uh, in your config um, and while the config that's highlighted here is a local file system repository option the location being an NFS mount point. Uh, you can you can have a GCP implementation with the upcoming release, um, 
And in the future, you would be able to have an S3 configuration for this as well. And Solar exposes four APIs um, as part of the backup restore uh, umbrella. And that's the backup, the restore, the list backup, and the delete backup uh, API calls. The backup call, uh, let's see what happens when you send in a backup call. Uh, when you send in a backup call to, to Solar, it parses those parameters, picks up the right repository implementation based on what you've already configured um, and what's been provided as part of the request, uh, and then sends an internal core admin API call to back up the core. Well, this call is kind of an optional call because uh, Solar allows you to specify something called the index backup strategy. And while right now it supports two, uh, two strategies out of the box, one being copy index files and the other one being none, and they do exactly as the name suggests. The copy index file um, would allow you to take a, take an index file and back it up into your implementation of choice or the, at the location that you've specified, or none would skip backing up all of your data. Uh, and move, and then it moves on to the next step allow, and backs up your configs. In this case, it would allow you to only back up configs for you to create a collection, say, that looks exactly like like the current collection, but does not hold any other data that you have uh, in your old or the existing collection. And towards the end of the request, it does some internal housekeeping uh, where it takes care of things like ensuring you're not, uh, you don't have too many backups and to clean up the, the, the oldest backup that you might have if, you spe if you've specified the number of backups that are allowed uh, for a given repository implementation. So moving on to availability. Um, so availability is, uh, is, what is, what is availability? Availability is the probability that a system will, uh, will work as required, when required, uh, during a, a task or a, or a mission. And the mission is basically a project, the time when you really intend to use the system. The system which aims to ensure an agreed level of operational performance, uh, generally termed as, uh, as uptime, for a higher than normal period, and the normal period might vary based on use case to use case, um, is called a highly, like, it's, it's called a highly available system. Uh, when the system is not available, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, considered to be downtime. Um, a highly available system is designed uh, with redundancy uh, with redundancy in the system to take care of both micro and macro level failures uh, to overcome component failures at different levels. The systems are designed with no single point in failures so as to ensure uh, availability uh, even when something were to go down. It's generally achieved by uh, redundancy, monitoring, and failover, a combination of those so that you should you not only need redundancy, but you also need monitoring in order to detect when something goes down and to fail over by either taking uh, that specific component out of out of action, or to di or, or in addition to direct traffic that was meant for that component onto a, onto a healthy component. An important aspect here is highly avail high availability for a system does not really translate to. Uh, a system never going down. It just, it just means that the system is going to continue to work beyond a certain expected uh, availability threshold, which is expected out of the system. So any highly available system is, uh, is and can, can go down. It's just whether it, it still continues to work for the expected duration. And while HANDR uh, might sound very similar in terms of what they're trying to achieve, they, they're essentially different. Uh, they have some logical overlap, but a highly available system by design handles uh, smaller scale issues, something, um, you know, a smaller uh, component going down. Uh, whereas DR generally means a bigger problem has happened and you need to now recover uh, after the loss of something that is more than just a small component uh, of the system. So Solar has provided HA options uh, for a while now. And replicas are, are the essential building blocks when it comes to HA in Solar. Replicas provide redundancy um, and so HA. Uh, in a sense that if, if one replica goes down, uh, another active replica takes over processing the requests uh, that were meant for the original replica. 
Uh, Solar does not automatically spin up something, but it makes sure that anything that is meant for something that, that's now down is rerouted to, to an active replica. It also takes over other roles and responsibilities like being a leader or um, when something were to go down, uh, ensuring the availability of the system again. Now, however, there are times when, uh, when due to some error, which may be human or not, uh, the impact on the system is not limited to one or two components, it's not local, it's not physically bounded. Um, in such a situation, you need something bigger that spans across the data centers. And that's where cross data center replication allows you to have a highly available system that spans across uh, a single uh, physical data center. So cross data center replication. Um, Talking about the history of cross data center replication, it's it's existed in Solar for a while now. With the first release of CDCR, as it was known, uh, coming out in in Solar 6.0, and um, it was meant to accommodate two or more data centers with limited bandwidth and allow for data to be replicated acro across these. But the design uh, decisions uh, that were made back back in the time um, had some issues. Uh, leading it to uh, to failures and uh, and problems so uh, for users that tried to use the system and so it was deprecated in ATEX. Um, it's now been removed and the intention is for it to be replaced in 9x by a new approach. Uh, I've kind of pushed some code up already into my GitHub repository. I'm still working on it. I have some working model of, of this thing, but let me talk about what this approach looks like. So the new solar with cross TC replication architecture looks something like this. Um, it's it's kind of uh, widely based off of an approach that we've used at Apple to achieve cross data center replication. Uh, the reason why why we didn't use what solar offered out of the box was not because we didn't believe in it, but uh, but because we started using it before solar had cross TC as a solution out of the box. Um, the best part about this entire infrastructure is, is that white box in the middle. Uh, all of the queuing mirroring logic, something that Solar's not designed for, it was never designed for, uh, is, is abstracted out in the system as compared to the older system, which, um, which tried to also behave, which, which also forced Solar to behave like a, like a queuing service. Uh, eventually leading to problems like unbounded growth in transaction log and out of memory issues. In this architecture, uh, when a client sends a request to Solar, Solar locally indexes that, that document um, and then puts this document onto, onto a queue and source one and dest two are basically uh, topics in this case. And the reason why I'm gonna to refer to a bunch of things using terminology that's generally common for Kafka, may not be common for other queuing systems, um, is, is just because of that, uh, that, uh, that the implementation out of, out of the box for this would be, would be Kafka to begin with, um, or would use Kafka to begin with. So Solar writes this to a source topic. Uh, let's call it source one because it belongs to data center one on the left-hand side. Uh, there's a mirror of some sort that mirrors this into a queue. Uh, that's called test two, uh, a destination queue for data center two. Uh, and there's a cross data center consumer uh, who's, con who's responsible for consuming everything that's coming into its local destination queue and writing it onto solar. Uh, and as, as I mentioned, uh, the isolation of responsibility in this case, uh, as solar is not expected to be the queue, uh, takes away a lot of problems that solar might have had with a CDCR solution. If you wanted two-way replication, uh, it still stays easy. Um, again, primarily because uh, everything inside the white box is is abstracted out of Solar, and it's not really it doesn't really know what's going on inside that box, which is where the complexity got added. Whatever bit of complexity there might be. Now, uh, in this case, when an incoming request comes directly to DC two, it gets written by Solar um, onto the source topic for that data center gets mirrored to the destination topic of the other data center, uh, only to be consumed by a cross-DC consumer that's running locally in that uh, in, in DC1. Uh, 
um, and indexed into uh, into this into that uh, into the solo cluster running on that data center. Uh, the trust PC consumer has checks and uh, has checks in place to ensure and avoid circular mirroring. So if if a, if a request were to come uh, originally into DC one, Solar is going to make sure that uh, it does not come back through the source top source topic of data center two. Uh, so there are there are checks and balances uh, that ensure that that doesn't happen. So the requirements for this new architecture are a messaging queue. That messaging queue, uh, as I mentioned, would be Kafka to begin with, but you could have your own implementation and have your own version of messaging queue. It could be RabbitMQ, it could be a file-based messaging queue, a proprietary internal, your company might have created a messaging queue system uh, and you could use it. Uh, you'd need a very simple implementation that would allow you to, to use that queue. Um, you'd need a messaging queue consumer implementation, uh, producer being optional. Uh, you'd need a cross DC consumer that would be provided out of the box and nothing would need to really change in there, maybe some configurations. Um, and you'd need external versioning for multi-bay replication. Um, the reason why you'd need it only for multi-bay replication is because if you were to send uh, a rect in the traditional uh, one-way replication model, uh, it's going to piggyback on Solar's versions if provided in the original originating data center uh, to just replicate everything over. But if you if you don't uh, if you have multiple data centers acting as source, then you can't have let that happen because those versions are not synchronized, uh, and and you'd need an external version in that case. Ingesting data into this entire system. Um, can happen in one of the two ways. It can either be sent directly to the queue um, and consumed by the consumer, in which case you would need an external version. You would also not get all the benefits of the second option, which is using a mirroring update request processor, which is a custom request processor that, that makes sure that the request is processed the way it's supposed to be processed, knowing that uh, the cross DC is enabled. Um, the biggest, the, one of the biggest benefit that it provides is the abstraction of the underlying queue. So if you were to start off with Kafka, because that's what Solar provides out of the box or would provide out of the box, um, but move on to using a different queuing mechanism because uh, that is your, you know, queue of preference, um, you wouldn't have to change your client code because the client's not writing to this queue and is agnostic of that queue. Um, so uh, that's one of the benefits. The second benefit is that it allows for more checks and controls before the submission. A request that's coming in might fail on the originating data center, in which case it shouldn't be written to the queue. But if you if you write directly to the queue, all these requests make it into Solar. It might succeed in, on one of the data centers, might not succeed on the other, uh, say because the configs were different, something, something was off. Uh, and the trust TC consumer in this case would have to be intelligent enough to figure out whether to retry it, discard it, or what needs to, what needs to be done with this request. And um, an important aspect that we used with an Apple uh, with our cross data center uh, replication was to handle deletes better. Uh, a system like this is designed so that you could have uh, you would avoid any accidents happening. Um, bringing down the system. So an accidental delete sent to one data center, uh, in our case, gets mapped into an update that only flags those updates by adding a field to those documents as uh, as deleted. Um, a, a parallel process that runs occasionally or frequently, uh, sorry, uh, is responsible to then go ahead and clean up these documents at a later point in time. What it, what it allows you to do is, say delete came in into data center one, um, by the time you're, uh, you've realized that it was an accidental delete, you could still go to data center to undelete those documents because those documents were just marked. And then use backup and restore or something else to restore all of that data back. You haven't really lost that data. Uh, all the requests that are processed in this, uh, uh, in this architecture are mirrored requests. Uh, mirrored request is nothing but something that enca encapsulates the original solar request uh, while adding uh, some mirroring metadata that can, that's used for tracking and metrics purposes. Uh, things like attempt and submit time that allows you to track, for example, uh, the submit time um, 
is the time when the request was originally or first written into the system by one of the solar instances uh, in one of the data centers. Uh, when a receiving data center uh, processes this request, it knows how long has it been and what the latency of this looks like. So um, allowing you to alert uh, if you're off and your SLAs are not met. Attempt is another thing that allows you to track and alert if the same request is getting rejected uh, by the cross TC consumer or not being successfully processed by the consumer. Uh, in which case you could go back and figure out figure out issues like uh, an out of sync config. The cross TC consumer uh, in this entire framework is a standalone app uh, uh, that has a simple responsibility of reading from the queue and writing to solar, uh, but also an important and intelligent uh, ability to figure out what kind of requests to discard and which wants to resubmit into the original queue. Uh, and I'm again using the term topic because uh, Kafka is the, is the preferred queuing uh, uh, mechanism used here. Um, so uh, after a lot of trials and errors and uh, we've learned it the hard way, I realized that the only kind of request that is safe to drop are 409s, which is basically uh, version conflicts. Uh, in case of optimistic concurrency, when a request comes in that the cross TC consumer is trying to send to Solar and Solar responds with a 409, uh, would translate to Solar already having a more recent version of this document, uh, in which case it's safe to discard this, this document. In all other cases, it's safe to retain these documents. Just like the backup and restore uh, story evolved uh, into allowing and using more cloud-based or is evolving into using more cloud-based uh, backup repositories, uh, the same is true for this approach here as it's not limited to Kafka. And even though it might start off with Kafka, this interface allows for using custom queue implementation. And that may or may not be something that you really desire or want or uh, need but it certainly allows you to stay open to the idea of switching over to a totally different queuing infrastructure. To extend that interface, and this might be a little too much uh, of detail, but if you were to be, if you were uh, to extend the interface and use your own custom messaging queue, you basically need to define source config. Uh, and this is all in flux. So uh, I wouldn't, oh, please don't hold me to this for now. Um, so there's source config that you'd need to implement and a cross TC consumer that accepts a message processor. Uh, the message processor uh, basically has all the logic that deals with uh, sending message to solar, figuring out what to do in case of a failure uh, and everything else around it. So all the intelligent aspect of stuff is in the message processor already pre-programmed. The cross TC consumer is what you'd need to implement. Um, the responsibility of which is to get mirrored objects from the queue and put it back to the queue in case of a failure. And the message processor is going to let the cross TC consumer know whether uh, an object needs to be put back into the queue or discarded. So it really needs to make no decision. It just needs to be able to get and put back uh, objects from and into the queue. And the best part is that this approach works well with the event driven systems, uh, which is what uh, I've been working with. So um, the road ahead on this is to release uh, this uh, kind of more basic uh, trust TC solution, especially because 9.0 would not have the old version. And a lot of people I realize kind of want the need for it are already using uh, the old version and would need some form of a trust TC replication to be offered by Solar. Uh, it does not report any metrics to a reporting system as of yet, uh, or, or that's not what I'm working or, or concentrating on at this point. Um, and that would be great to add. It does log all sorts of problems. So you can always take your logs and figure out what's going on and if something's off uh, or if everything is okay. Um, it does not handle collection API requests, which would be a good to have thing. Uh, it's something that we've had with an Apple. So I'd be happy to add it at, at a later point in time, but for now, uh, none of that is part of this solution, uh, this uh, this phase. Um, 
And it's great to have trusty C replicated clusters, but it's really important to have some form of a mechanism to ensure that these clusters are in sync. These clusters are working well together. Um, uh, in terms, of, even if it's not self-healing, it doesn't fix any problem. It, it's important for uh, for for there to be a way for people to know when when things are out of sync. And then support for more queue systems, uh, which again is completely subject to what the community might want. Maybe everyone just uses Kafka. That's what they love and that's what they use. Um, and they don't really want anything else. But uh, if people need something else uh, to be supported, uh, that's that's certainly on the road ahead. Um, and all of this <clears throat> can happen by community participation. So if this, some, if this is something that interests you, please feel free to ping or participate directly, whatever uh, might be your preferred way uh, to get involved in this. But yes, uh, and it doesn't have to be code, it can be testing, it can be trying out, pitching in ideas, uh, everything's valued. So while I spoke a lot about sort of the primary data store, uh, 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 I spoke about a lot of HADR sort of being safe and stable, scalable, and you being able to safely use solar in critical systems. Um, I'm very, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm very sorry, Anshu, to interrupt you uh, because we are running out of time. So maybe a yes. final thought you want to share, and then we have to wrap this up in the interest. Oh yeah, uh, this is this is actually the last slide, so I'm done. Yeah. So uh, the question is whether the you could use solar as a primary data store. TLDR is no. And that is basically because yes, it offers HA and DR, but it's just not designed to be a primary data store. It's not designed for storing documents that are really large and uh, do not follow the, the, the kind of uh, format that Solar is designed for. So yeah, um, Solar offers a lot and it's a great search engine. So I would recommend that you use Solar for just that. Um, and that's about it. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much, Anshum. Uh, I think this gave us great insights and I think many of us are looking forward to the new cross data center replication. I think it's also good to see uh, that the stuff you you developed at Apple uh, will finally uh, be open sourced. So I think that's always good to have something that is practice proven, uh, practice proven to, uh, to see and, and to make it into open source. 